Well, g'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now, customer job here. We've got a little bit of audio repair. An NAD, and it's a 3240PE amplifier. A very nice looking piece of gear. Very heavy. Yeah, so the complaint was a lot of smoke came out. Yeah, so we don't know where we're starting with this, but um, I thought I'd show you to start with of what it is. Okay, she's a pretty pretty nice amp. You can't buy them like this anymore. Okay, so we've got phono, phono ground, tuner, CD, uh, video or tape two, and tape one in and out. Okay. There's also some links here for a, a graphic equaliser so that you can pull that and go, yeah, pre-out to main in and do your tone shaping via your, um, your EQ um, that way. But otherwise, you've got bass and treble on the front. Four speakers, left and right, and, uh, well, B speakers. Um, obviously, same speakers, but just left and right. A soft clipping, okay, on or off, soft clipping. So not real sure what that does, probably nothing. Um, your impedance of your speakers. Now, you've got 4 ohm, normal, or 8 ohm, and I, uh, it's got high. Obviously, normal is classed as 4 ohm. And 8 ohm is a uh, high impedance, which I thought 8 would be a standard, but yeah, maybe 4 ohm. But the, the thing is set on 4 ohm, uh, sorry, 8 ohm on this side, so that switch is screwed in. So there it is. On, uh, as I said, on the front, what have we got? Speakers A, B, speakers off, A plus B. Up here, on off switch. We better not try that until we get it pulled apart and see where the smoke come from. <laughs> um, bass, treble. You've got um, a bass EQ. Obviously, sort of a loudness control. And you've got some sort of uh, infra. Infra off, infra on. Oh, I don't know what that is. So, yeah, haven't seen infra before mono stereo so we'll leave him out on stereo tape monitor you've got soft clipping up here whether it's turned on or off obviously um yeah, shapes the clipping just um I, I don't know shapes the top of it i guess um so it's maybe a little bit less distortion I'm not sure cd Phono, tuner, and tape two or video. Low level, obviously, sort of a mute type thing, but well, yeah, an attenuation probably down uh, to 25% um, level, 10% level, something like that. But yeah, you can reduce your volume level with that. Okay, and loudness. Now we've got loudness there which I thought base EQ or something infra here may have some effect on. But, yeah, I'm not sure how that works. I'm just here to get the thing going. The inside one is balance. Okay. So nice little arrangement there and volume on the outside ring. Right. Well, that's the amp. I'm not sure what this is rated at, probably about 40 a channel, 40 watts per channel, I would say, 40, 50 maybe. Um, being a, uh, a 3240, I would say it's it's either 32 or it's 40 watts per channel. I would say 40. It's got some um, bird poo and <laughs> bits and pieces. I don't really know where this has been. Hopefully not in the house. So there we go. Let's pull the top off it and find out where the smoke came out.
And as we all know, once the smoke comes out, she no go anymore. This imp's had a little bit of a hard time by the look of him. Lots of scratches and scuffs along the side. It's almost um, almost up for a repaint along there, but that's up to the customer. Be interesting to do this one. I've um, I don't mind doing amplifiers, but um, depends on how much smoke has come out. And the other thing is, uh, I don't keep a lot of transistors in stock, especially not for NAD, although they're a fairly universal type circuit board. So hopefully we've got parts. Maybe we won't. Okay, I'll get the camera in a little bit better position there before we pull the top off so you can see what's going on. That'll give you a, a little bit better view, wouldn't it? Okay. Two screws. Back in the day when they used to use screws to put things together. Not plastic clips like these days. That's a one-way job. Or oh, you don't start it in the first place. Okay. There we go. Set him over there. And there we go. And oh yes. Okay. Um this has probably had water in it, by the look of up here. I would say this has been wet. And, well, you might have picked it. I can see what's happening here, in around this area here. I'll bring the camera in closer. Let's have a real look at what's, well, where the smoke came out of. Righto, guys. Well... I'm guessing this is the right channel. This is the left one. Uh, transistor there with uh, half of him missing. A lot of black area down around the bottom here. I would say that transistor, I think there's a bit missing out of him as well. Yeah, the bit would have been a bit of smoke, all right. Um, what else? Oh, there's a little transistor down in there. Let's bring that forward a bit and see what's going on. Um, look at that fella. Yeah, split in two, breaking apart. And this one as well. Okay, we've got a little bit of a job ahead of us here. Um, look at that fella. Same thing. Uh, down. I'll just take this up a bit. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, down in here, we have a couple of caps. That one there, um, totally exploded, been hot. This one over here. You can't quite see him, but the top's blown out of him. So, uh, yeah, pro the, probably the caps have started the ball rolling here. Um, transistors, probably don't know, shorted speaker lead. Uh, caps have caused thermal runaway. You you wouldn't know what's what's happened in here, but there's a lot of action in here. The other side, the other channel, Actually, doesn't look too bad. I think he's all okay. 
although there's a cap that's there that's also swollen. So we might be able to save this fella by replacing the caps on this side. Little transistor down in here. He's been yeah, pretty warm. So we'll just see what's going on. Um, all, all appears... All appears okay, but we'll check the transistors. So we'll do that now and just see how much we've got ahead of us. I'm also thinking of um, how this board's going to come out. I don't think the board is going to come out. I think we take the bottom off and work along in here. Because getting that board out is dismantling the whole unit. A little bit uh, concerned about water damage over the other side, but um, that's only in the preamp side, um, our phono side. Nothing there that can't be fixed. But yeah, with uh, with this fella over here, we've got a bit of a job ahead of us. I'll give you a, a different perspective there. Um, yeah, a real uh, bit of a mess. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what these are. I'll have to uh, download a manual now and see what's um, what the transistors are, whether I've got them. Of course, I would have caps and resistors and bits and pieces, but this might have to be an order, so we might not be able to finish this. Certainly not in this episode. I'll have to, um, yeah, I'll have to go and probably round up parts but let's check a few things anyway i'm sure that transistor with um, that's half the missing won't be recoverable what do you reckon i don't think so okay so there we go a little bit more than yeah what i sort of expected that is for sure The two filter caps, well, we don't know what they are like either. We're going to have to check all these. We're going to have to check everything with this. This could be a, uh, yeah, a, a, a nice nitty-gritty repair. All right, let's pull the bottom off and have a look under the bottom, and then we'll check with the multimeter. We'll go through, check the transistors, and dig up a circuit and see what, yeah, what we can use. Okay. Well, guys, um, I'm sure if you uh, wanted to see a nitty-gritty amplifier repair, we've got it with this one. It's uh, just a matter of parts, of course. But, uh, yeah, this is pretty full on, this one. We can certainly see where the smoke come out. Okay, let's see what's underneath here. Ah, okay. Not too bad to get to. Down over the road. Yeah. All right. And, of course, we can see where the action happened. Right there. The board is fairly burnt there. Uh, mainly on the two driver transistors, really. They, boy, they've, they've cooked. And, of course, the outputs are over here. Let's give you a bit closer look at this. Okay. That's what we're dealing with here. That's your a driver transistor right there. I don't know whether I, I can give you a better look there. The camera is, we'll get there, there you go, driver transistor, there and there, so that'll be a P and P, NPN complementary pair, and the same with the output, and the output's not burnt, it's only this area here, and boy, this has been hot in around here, also hot just over there, 
which I don't know what that is. The other side, let's go over the other side, looks okay. That's pretty good. Uh, where's the driver transistors there? I can't see them there. One there and one there, I think, or over here somewhere. But anyway, the board's not that burnt there. There is some discoloration over there. If I can get yours in there. A little bit around there. So something's been warm there. Lots of things to check here. And, of course, um, our filter caps here. There's no use in turning this on with a dim bulb. We can see where the smokes came out. So, yeah, it's a matter of uh, let's flip him over and find out how much damage has been done. Now, just before I uh, check everything, you can see where there's been, well, water in here, moisture, something. Um, the bottom tray was uh, a little bit rusty, so there's been a little bit of moisture. But none of this looks too bad. Yeah, there's a little op-amp there that's um, probably for the phono. Um, it doesn't look too bad. The pins are not corroded or anything like that. So I think most of the damage yeah, is the main amp. Okay, set up with the meter. Let's go for the obvious. Let's go for the transistor that's got half him blown away and see what he measures. And of course, not very much. Collector to base, nothing. Dead short. Okay. We knew we knew he'd be shorted. Second one. Yep. Short. Collector base. Collector emitter. Ah. Collector emitter, but collector to base, well, I think that's, I don't know what sort of transistors they are yet. Hang on a minute. Got to get in here. He's not in a good state. We've got a junction there. Reading, if I can keep my meter on there. Reading, um... About 50 ohms. That's not good. Now, there's a little, two little transistors up here. I'm not knowing the circuit, but they're uh, maybe temperature compensation, equation current, something like that. I don't know what they do. This one hmm, is short and short. You probably can't see that, but I can't do this any other way. Okay, so. Base emitter on this fella over here. Mm. He's shorted as well. Base collector, dead short. And, of course, no sense in even thinking about the two drivers. Yeah. The other little fellas down here, um, we'll have to take them out. It's pretty hard to... Uh, they're right against the board. Pretty hard to check them there. We can get underneath, but um, sort of soon enough, I think. What we need now is a circuit. Have a look at what we can find. There's probably emitter resistors on the transistors there that uh, depends, although it's a, it's a push-pull amp. So it's, um, yeah, it's probably directly coupled. Okay, so we've got a fuse down here. Let's check him. Fuse is okay. This fuse, he's okay. All right, well, we know there's a fair bit of damage and we've got to start removing parts out of that side. What about this side? Once again, you can't see from me hand. Um, we've got a junction there. We've got a junction there. And if I can get in there. No, we see. We, don't, we only seem to have one junction on that transistor. Swap him around there. It's probably the, uh, probably the PNP. 
Yeah, it was. Okay, there's our junction there and there. So that transistor on this side is okay. We'll swap our leads over because this will be the NPN. And here we have a junction there and a junction there. Yes, we do. If I can get in there, guys. There it is. Okay. That's the um, base collector, base emitter. So that's fine. He's, he's fine. I'd say the only thing with this side will be the capacitors, one there that's really bulged, and one little fellow here, and, yeah, there's one up here. So it'll be a, a recap job on the output stage, okay, of this one. Check these, of course. These may have caused the problem, but I doubt it. I think more like shorted speaker leads would maybe have done this. Right, guys. Well, we'll um, we'll find out a bit more information, get a circuit, and find out what uh, whether I've got the parts or this is going to be an order and a later on video. But um, I suppose we can get the parts removed on this video. Well, guys, on this one, I think I need a longer screwdriver. Yeah, can't get in there with this fella. So they're free. I'll tell you what, all that um, heatsink compound is just flaking off these. So there's been very little transfer of heat. That's probably this side as well. So we'll be doing the whole thing here. All right, we'll get underneath and start desoldering these fellas. A change of tactic here. Going to leave these, these fellas here. And I'm unsoldering them, unsoldering all these. There is uh, half a dozen screws here to take the heat sink and the transistors out. And we will need to, yeah, get to the new ones when we get them to, uh, yeah, put them back in, get to the screws there. So I will take him out. Where does, does he plug in? No, he doesn't. So I'll take him off and unsolder all those and by the look of it yes the front panel will have to come off to get at a screw up behind here to get to the front of the heat sink righto let's start dismantling and of course all the knobs everything on the front's got to come off
Okay, well, that's got most of the transistors out. This is the good channel. We're going to make sure, double check all these, clean the ends of them up so they every, everything goes back together nice and easily. Um, this side, yeah, it's a bit of a rat's nest. And yeah, that, um, that heat sink compound has just turned to chalk. So obviously, uh, these could have just overheated and shorted out. Okay, the dry, a uh, couple of, well, I don't know what these do, pre drivers. Okay, let's have a look at that one. That's not a bad effort. There would have been a fair bit of smoke happening. This one on this side, fair bit of smoke happening there as well. Okay, these are not insulated, so that's the reason why these little five um, mica washers are held in behind it to insulate them from the heat sink. And the one that's left on here that I couldn't get to, well, he's, he's not real good either. He's looking fairly sad. So we are going to take these off. Re, uh, redo the heatsink compound and um, yeah, just clean this whole thing up. So I'm pleased we decided to do this rather than just try and manage on the one side. Could have got it out, but yeah, pretty pretty difficult and half a job. We don't do half a job, so I don't need, as I said before, you don't need them coming back. Now, there is... That fella and his mica washer. You can. Uh, we don't use mica these days. We um, use the little silicon ones, but um, but these will clean up and do the job. It keeps things original. All the mica washers are gone off there. Okay, so uh, let's let's check these just to double check to make sure everything's right on this channel. Because then I've got to find out, do I have to order transistors? A 2SD1047, which will be uh, an MPN uh, output, uh, and a 2SB817. Now, I don't know whether I've got those. I may have to order the, uh, the correct ones for it. And I can't see the numbers on these yet. But once again, I haven't got the circuit at the moment. We're just checking things out. Now, my multimeter over here. Diode test. Okay. So, let's see what we've got. This fella. Got a junction there and a junction there. He's okay. Try this one over here, and we've got junction there, and ah, can't keep him still. Junction there, and Base, collector, base, emitter, junction. He's okay. All right. We'll try the one in the middle. We'll get to the big ones in a minute. Junction there. And a junction there. He's okay. This fella. Junction there. And a junction there. He's okay. Swap him around. Junction there. And a junction there. All those are okay. This is really good. Good news. It just means we need less transistors. Less work. Right. So I'll clean up that a little bit later on. And get him ready to put in. I'll show you when I'm doing that. Now. The other bits and pieces here. What we've got to get out is these two. 
Now, they're just sitting there. The board is burnt like anything. There's a burnt resistor there too, by the look of him. I don't know what resistor that is. Uh, 455. It's, um, yeah, we'll soon find out what it is on the circuit. All right, we've got to get them out. And this will be the tricky bit because the board's very burnt. Try and get this where you guys can see it. And the thing doesn't want to rock around all over the place. All right. Let's just try to sell the wick and see if we can get anything off the board. I don't know whether you can, you guys see that okay? There's sort of not much light on it. Try and get these out without destroying too much of the board. Well, the board's fairly burnt. It will have to be reconstructed a little bit. Okay, let's see if they come out. Oh, well, not much to take them out, is there? There's not much left of them. Boy. He went bang. Okay, this fella. Yeah, same. Nothing left of him. Bit of a job here. Now, there's a lead there that can come out. There we go. And a bit of a lead here, and I say a bit of a lead, that's all there is there. We've got lots of things here to check out, a resistor there. And I'm pretty sure he's burnt, it might be just black from the smoke. Um, <clears throat> we'll be obviously changing that fella. There's a diode in there, 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 there. So all those will have to be checked. We've got to clean this area up here. And yeah, it's, uh, the circuit board's had a bit of a hard time there. Okay, so we've got to clean that up. A couple of diodes up here. Yeah, check all the diodes. And then these transistors here. As I said, I don't know what they do, but um, probably time for the circuit. There's my phone again, and two caps there. Okay, so, yeah, we'll, um, we'll keep going here. Try and tidy these fellas up the best we can, and uh, move on from there.
Right, well, I think um, they'll, they'll come up OK. We'll be able to resurrect the tracks once I get it under the um, Maggie lamp. And when we're putting the new transistors back in, I don't think there'll be a problem there. So, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead, clean up the rest of the board where the other transistors are, where the power transistors go. And um, then we'll um, change some caps uh, down the track. We'll test the electrodes. Uh, meanwhile, I've got to now go and dig up a circuit and dig up some transistors if I can find any here. If not, it's an order from Sydney. So, yeah, this may be uh, another couple of weeks before we yeah get around to finishing the video. But anyway, now I'm just going to clean it up, show you what I've done, and um, we'll also clean the heatsink, perhaps mount the other transistors um, with new um, conductive paste. And, um, yeah, we'll have some more news very shortly. Right, well, guys, there's, there's the, uh, well, I guess it's the left-hand channel, if that's the right. Anyway, there's the other channel. Um, this um, thermal grease put on all the, behind the transistors on the um, mica insulators. And now it's just a matter of checking to make sure there's no shorts or anything like that. We certainly don't want anything happening. And, um, yeah, I don't have these transistors used to uh, because they're a very common pair but I don't have them so I'm going to have to order these um, this will put me behind a little bit on this project probably uh, about three or four days so but anyway um, if we continue doing this um, we might split this in two actually I think this video we'll uh, get onto the board now um, change a couple of caps we'll test the caps and see what they're like and then we might we'll call this part one and part two will be installing the new transistors um setting it up testing everything um setting up our quiescent current for um for our idle on the uh, transistors yeah we'll we'll do that okay we'll get the unit and have a little bit further look at it now this is the area where we're working at the moment there's our, uh, the two blown caps. You can see that one there. This one down here. Uh, there's a little, there's some other little caps in around the bottom here on the power regulators, which, yeah, could have caused a problem. But um, these fellas in here are the main fellas. That one, that, those three, that one, and that one. And, of course, those two. They're the ones we're going to be changing at the moment to uh, make sure the amp is uh, up and going. I'm going to check all these transistors. Now, something I noticed here that um, can catch you out if you're unsuspecting, 
Normally, the dot or the line on the negative of the electrolytic capacitor is always on the negative. This one, the dot, and sometimes a line, is on the positive. So that one in there more or less indicates, okay, that's negative, as we, well, we always think that way these days. But not in this case. The dot is the positive. Okay, so totally opposite to most things we do where the dot or the line is the negative. So a little bit of a trap there that you can get caught on. And, uh, of course, there'll be a bit of activity if you put them in the wrong way around and start it up. Now, on the other side, a um, similar thing. There's a cap that's bulging there. Um, the standard caps. The little fellow in here amongst the power regulators. I don't know whether you can see him, but, uh, yeah, he's got to be changed. And a couple down in around here and over to the side. The, more or less the circuitry for this one is over here. And, well, the other one, it's a little bit easier to get at but this is no problem we can do everything we have to over here we know this side's working but let's get it right okay so we'll start changing caps i'll be back when i've done all the caps and then we'll probably check some resistors and diodes more importantly okay now working our way through the caps i've um changed what needed to be changed here. These all test okay. The um, value and the ESR is quite good on all these, strangely enough. And the same with these ones down here. Although that one there, uh, it's probably an illusion. Looks like it's bulged. But anyway, we'll recheck him. He's on a bridge rectifier output somehow there. Don't know yet. Um, these two. Now, we're working our way along here and we'll get to this side. I'm going to remove these. Uh, I don't trust uh, checking them without taking them out. It may need to main filter caps. Could have been AC ripple that caused this with one of these open. We, we don't know. So I'll remove them and test them. Now, we're just using some solder wick there to clear the hole completely. There was a little bit holding the, the leg in. And this cleans it up nicely anyway. Ready to put it back in. Okay. And this one is held with glue. And of course, we all know that that glue can also cause a problem. Although probably not in this case but it's certainly hanging on. There we go. Once again, stripe, positive, guys. Here's the negative over here. Okay, positive. It looks quite good. He's rubbery underneath, which is good. These are probably both okay. But let's do them. We'll get the other one out. Now, let's see what we're reading here. I'll use the black and the red. Mind you, with these little meters, you can use any lead you want. They're intelligent little fellas. Very handy. Would have been good to have one of these 50 years ago. Okay. Let's see what he reads. Sixty-four hundred, and the ESR is 0.15. No worries there, and they're sixty-eight hundred. So sixty-four fifty-two. Um, that's close enough. That's definitely close enough. Okay, let's check the second one. And with these things, you're better off safe than sorry. If you put it back together, and there's uh, extreme ripple on there, and she goes up in smoke. You've done your dough. Okay, what's this one read? 
ESR point is point one four. So no worries. Both those caps are quite good. We can also check them, I guess, on our fluke meter. Let's grab it and just compare. Okay. Negative there. Positive. What are we reading? 64.29. Pretty well the same as the other one. And what's this one reading? Sixty four ninety uh, now I think the other one read uh, sixty four ninety nine actually if I can get a good connection here yeah that just dropped a little bit it's probably me touching it probably my leads could be but anyway um, we know. Both these are uh, good caps. We can put them back in. Now, as well as these caps up here in our output, in our um, amp output, we've also got the two main filter caps down the bottom here on the uh, high voltage side of the supply. This supply with this thing is uh, 71 volts, so plus minus 71. So we will also be checking those, but I doubt very much whether they've got any problems. Now, I was uh, going to slip these two back in, but I won't for a minute. I'll do these caps here. Makes it a lot easier to get at, and then we'll clean the board up, then we'll put them back in. All right, guys. Um, let's, um, let's do a check on some of the diodes here, and um, I can actually um, tell you which ones, if we find any dead ends, um, which one it is. So we're going for D417, see there, um, he's okay. Okay, so now we'll go to this one, D419, can't see the line, uh, the ring on him, he's okay. Okay, little follow in here. He's okay. Another little fella. He's okay. Okay, there's a couple of diodes in here. He's okay. And that fella's okay. Okay, we're going pretty well. So the, the damage is maybe not as extensive as what we thought, but still, been a bit happening. This one here, 0.8, I think we're the other way around in this one. I can't quite see it. Yep, that's a Zener. That's a 0.7. But, uh, there should be two Zeners in this, I think, just uh, when we check the circuit. But um, okay, the next thing to check, I suppose, is transistors. Now, there's... Gee, these, these are going to be hard to get to. That fellow there. Looks like he's connected, oh well, in where the pot is there for uh, adjusting our current. Um, no, he's 661 and 667, so he's okay. This fella here, uh, he's the other way around. <clears throat> just give you, I'm doing this just to give you as an idea of what's 657 and 638, he's okay. This one, just give you as an idea of. Um, if you're fixing one of these, um, what to look for. And let's swap him around. Okay, junction there, 653 and... 
that's don't worry, that's only me. Six fifty six fourteen and six fifty-three. He's okay. Okay, this fella here. Uh six seventy and that's me. I think we've got a diode across him. No, I don't know whether these are PNP or NPN. That's why I would keep swapping around here. He's okay. Six ninety one and in the centre. Boy, I can't even see it. And 0.7 is okay. This one here. I think we're uh, we're looking pretty good. Yeah, there's one junction there, junction there. So, okay. So they're all okay so far. Check this one. He's okay. And he's okay. We're looking good. Now, we've checked that one. I'll check this fella here. I don't think we have. I don't know. I don't know where we're up to now. But anyway, there's only these two to go. I... I heard him, 6.43 and 6.20. So, yeah, he's okay. This one down the bottom here. So diodes and transistors are looking pretty good. He's okay. Righto, we can't find any other fault with any other diode or transistor there. Okay, so really, um, it's a matter of resistors. That fella there, he's, um, he's one of the main sus looking ones, and he reads 1K and 970 ohm and it is a 970 ohm resistor. So he's uh, R 455 and the equivalent on this side. Yeah, we can't follow. I'm, I'm not, I'm wasting time. I'm not following these without the circuit. So um, we'll get the circuit. But um, yeah, all that is, um, it all looks pretty straightforward. All, all the, as I said, all these caps have been replaced in, in the next segment when we do, um, we do more to this. We get the new transistors. We, I've got to clean all this up. I'm not going to record all this. We'll get some uh, probably uh, IPA in here, spray some IPA and a, uh, oh, a brush or a toothbrush or something. Clean all this up. It's pretty ordinary. And we've also got to uh, clean this fella up up here. It's pretty, yeah, the, the board is grotty. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, I think I have to order anyway these transistors. I think this is enough for this video. It's going to be long enough. It's been going on a while. So um, I don't want this to be a, a super long video. I'd rather break this into two segments where you can see the first segment of diagnosing and more or less pinpointing what's wrong and the second segment, fixing up and testing. 
okay? So uh, if you want to follow me on the next one, um, subscribe and hit the bell. So it, YouTube will tell you when the next video comes up, okay? If you like it, give us a thumbs up. But uh, the subscription really helps. All right. So until next time, uh, it could be a week or so by the time we get parts, but I will be recording this straight away when we've got some parts and we'll get part two up. Okay. Until then, bye for now.